Okay, so we're in section three, basic concepts of democracy. Foundations. American notion of democracy rests on the following five principles. A recognition of the fundamental worth and dignity of every person, meaning everyone has worth. A respect for the equality of all persons, which is our, one of our most foundational ideas, is that we are respecting everybody's um, equal worth. Um, each individual's worth the same amount to, to the Lord, and so we need to make sure that we are actively looking for a way to respect a person's equality, whether it be equality of security or equality of speech, equality of religion, etc. We also have a faith in majority rule and the insistence upon minority rights. So our government tends to listen to the majority, but they will always try to protect the minority rights for dissenting opinions. Now, minority rights does not mean a certain race or gender, but simply just a dissenting opinion. And that's important to note because we usually we say minority, we think of um, marginalized groups um, that typically are of a gender or of a race. But that in this case is not talking about that. They're talking about people who have a different opinion than the majority. So maybe a libertarian who wants government reduced would be a minority um, opinion versus majority opinion. Also, an acceptance of the necessity of compromise uh, throughout our history of the United States. We have had major compromises, and sometimes they lead to great and wonderful things, and other times they don't. But we do need to have an idea that we can find common ground in two opinions that are very different. Democrats and Republicans find compromise all the time in Congress, just that we never hear about it. We only hear about when they fight. And finally, the widest possible degree of individual freedom meaning how far your freedom stretches before you, in fact, infringe on another's uh, freedom. Those are the five foundational points. Another term that we should be familiar with is popular sovereignty, a principle of democracy in which political authority rests ultimately in the hands of the people. So the people are the ones creating the government and establishing it and allowing it to rule over them. That's where the sovereignty of the government rests, not with the leader, but with the people who are underneath that particular government. We also have majority rule and minority rights, similar to what we've already discussed, but here's a more um, definite definition. The democratic principle that a government follows, uh, the, pr the preference of the majority of voters, but protects the interests of the minority. We see this with the Bill of Rights um, very, very, very um, often is that we use the Bill of Rights, or people utilize the Bill of Rights to protect their opinion and have the right to exercise their opinion. You can see there's a cute little picture there. Equality. Now this, we gave its own slide because equality is such an important American ideal. First, we have equality of opportunity, a widely shared American ideal that all people should have freedom to use whatever talents and wealth they have to reach their fullest potential. That is saying you have the ability, you have the right to a certain degree to use whatever talent God has given you and what resources you have to work at 110%, to reach your fullest potential, to be who you want to be, but that's going to take work. We also have political equality, the right to participate in politics equally based on the principle of one person, one vote. Everyone gets one election ballot, or should have only one election ballot. Whether you receive it in the mail, which is called absentee, or you go to the poll, you do need to only have it vote, we only get to vote once. And sometimes we have people that will get an absentee, not fill it out, or fill it out, and then go to the poll and vote again, that is voter fraud. And depending on the level of infraction, it could be a federal offense or just a typical state one. It really depends on the individual, okay? So it's important to note that their political equality can only stretch so far. You get one vote per person. And finally, liberty. Freedom from governmental control. Everyone has a different definition of liberty. It is uh, subjective on how people interpret it, but for our purposes, uh, for this course, freedom from governmental control will be how we define it. Democracy in the free enterprise system. Okay. We're uh, now moving into how does our government quickly and uh, constantly interact with our economy? Just briefly, we'll get into the full economy of second semester. America's commitment to freedom goes beyond just politics. It also affects the economy. 
American system is often called the free enterprise system, also known as capitalism. That's usually how we refer to ourselves as we're a capitalist economy, which is true. We do have capitalism, but there are some things that we need to go into a little bit further describing our form of capitalism. The four characteristics that we have, private ownership, individual initiative, profit, and competition. Private ownership simply means that one can own their business privately. The government does not interfere. Individual initiative means they get to start things up. That you get to make, you get to choose what you're going to um, go into. You choose your profession. You choose if you're going to create your own business or work for somebody else. Profit, that's making money or making a new resource that will add to your wealth. And competition, uh, are you who are you competing against? You might sell fruit and another person sells fruit and you are competing against one another for people to buy your product. Then we have the laissez-faire capitalism, an, eco an economic system in which the, the means of production and distribution are privately owned and operated for profit with minimal or no governmental interference. Now, we do not have a laissez-faire capitalistic um, economy. But it is important to note that we once had this at the very, very beginning of our nation, but our founders and even people following them realized that the government would have to play a larger role in the, in the economy for it to be substantial and for it to work with our growing population size. Okay. Laissez faire can work with small communities, but if you're having a massive scale of 318.9 million people, you're going to need some more governmental control than just you do what you want to do. A lot of abuses will come into play if there is not a safeguard in place. And finally, to continue our discussion of our economy, we also have the free market is another system, another thing that we call. That's where businesses can enter and exit at will, meaning they are not compelled to exist. So if, a, if Dunkin' Donuts wants to shut down and not sell donuts anymore, they have the right to do that. The government will not force them to stay in business. Okay. It may sound like we're free, but the American government plays a role in the American economy and always has. For one of our easiest examples of them playing a role is, hey, you can no longer use lead paint on little on baby toys. Okay, that is the government putting a restriction on how a good is made. That's a very simple and easy one to identify with and not fight over. We'll get into the nitty gritty details of the government interfering with free enterprise next semester. This is just a quick brief overview of our foundations of government. This is chapter one, of course. And then finally, the mixed economy. This is what we have. An economy in which private enterprise exists in combination with a considerable amount of government regulation and promotion. Now, our government subsidizes, meaning helps out or gives money to or incentivizes certain um, farmers to, to produce certain goods. So corn is a subsidized product, milk, um, certain types of meat. All of those different farmers and um, entities do receive uh, subsidies from the government to grow or raise a certain product. And so we'll get into that when we watch Food, Inc., and we will investigate whether or not we should have a mixed economy, but that is indeed, in fact, what we have. This is the end of Section 3 of Chapter 1. Um, happy studying.